Let's now look at the bernstein vezirani algorithm. Here is the problem it solves. Imagine we have a function, f, that takes in a bit string of length n and returns a single bit, which is the dot product of the input with some secret string s modulo 2. Our task is to find out what the secret string s is. On a classical computer, the approach is to input a bit string of all zeros except for one in one position. This allows us to get the value of one position of the bit string s as all the zeros in the input will cancel out in the dot product. This means that we must query the function n times, where n is the length of s, since each query we get one value of s. With quantum computers on the other hand, we only need to query the function once to find out what s is. If we look at the circuit, it may look familiar. It's the same circuit as a deutsch joza algorithm, just with a different function being applied to the qubits. Initially, the qubits are in the state n zeros minus. Then at psi sub 1, the state is 1 over root 2 to the power of n times the sum over all x, where x is a bit string of length n, x, minus. At psi sub 2, we apply the oracle. Since the target qubit is in the minus state, we use the phase oracle property, so the state becomes 1 over root 2 to the power of n times the sum over all x, negative 1 to the power of f of x, x minus. Let's rewrite f of x as a dot product of x and s, since that is the definition of our function. Let's also omit the minus qubit, since it is not needed anymore. Now we apply a Hadamard to each of our qubits. Let's distribute the negative 1 to the power of x dot s into the sum. We can now add the exponents, giving us the dot product of s and x plus the dot product of x and z. We can factor out the x, giving us s plus z dotted with x. The plus indicates bitwise exclusive or, so for each bit in s, we exclusive or it with the bit in z that is in the same position. So the ith position of s plus z is s sub i exclusive ord with z sub i. This gives us another bit string of length n. Now we measure the qubits. Let's look at the probability of measuring s. Expanding out, we find the amplitude of the s state is 1 over 2 to the power of n times the sum over all x's, where x is a bit string of length n, negative 1 to the power of s plus s dotted with x. Since plus indicates bitwise exclusive or, s plus s equals to all zeros. Now, in the exponent, we have all zeros dotted with x. This will equal zero, since all the zeros will cancel out all the x's at each position. Applying the power means the state becomes 1 on 2 to the power of n times the sum over all x's, 1. Since there are 2 to the power of n bit strings of length n, there are 2 to the n possible values of x, so evaluating the sum, we get 2 to the power of n. This leaves the amplitude of the s state as 1. This means that the probability of measuring s after applying the algorithm is 1. And that is it. After one query of the function, we can find s by measuring the qubits. You may start to see the similarities between this algorithm and the others. Applying a Hadamard to each of the qubits so that the state is in a uniform superposition, then applying the function and once again applying Hadamards is used in many algorithms.